Hola mi amigos, so recently I figured out that I haven't made a video about this and I finally wanted to make one of it, so check this out. So I'm standing next to my Wi-Fi router and my phone's connected to my Wi-Fi network Batcave with 5GHz channel. So let's do an internet speed test and as you can see I get around 400 to 500 Mbps on a connection of 1GB per second. Now if I switch over to Batcave 2.4GHz network and again do a speed test, it's got a much lower transfer speed at just 30 to 40 Mbps. So does 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi give you more download speed? Is that exactly what I'm saying? Well, we'll come back to that in a minute. Now, if I move away from the router and go outside the garden, and you can see I can still connect to Batcave 2.4 gigahertz, and the transfer speed is quite low, around 20 megabits per second. But if I try connecting to Batcave 5 gigahertz, well, it just doesn't show up. So does 2.4 GHz give you more range? Is it exactly what I'm saying? Well, we'll come back to that again in a minute. And the final thing that I want to show you is if I open my router on a web portal and see how many devices are connected to my 2.4 GHz, you can see there's a ton of them, like C200, which is the TP-Link security camera. There's also some other cameras, microwave, MacBook, and a smartphone. And if I switch over to 5 GHz, you can see the number of devices are quite low. You're probably wondering if 2.4 GHz connects to way more devices than say 5 GHz. Well, if you really want to know about that, I'll go into it in descriptive detail in just a minute. So let's find out the exact differences between 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz to see which one's right for you. Okay, let's start the differences between 5 GHz Wi-Fi and 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. So like we saw in our first example, the biggest differences between 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz is speed. Under ideal conditions, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi will support up to 400 megabytes per second, depending on the class of the router. 5 GHz Wi-Fi will support up to 1 gigabytes per second. Now, I've got around 100 and 500 Mbps on 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz respectively, but others can get up to 400 Mbps on 1 gigabytes per second, depending on many factors. For example, the maximum speed you might see is also dependent on what wireless standard or router supports be it A02.11b, A02.11g, A02.11n or A02.11ac. The second difference between 5GHz Wi-Fi and 2.4GHz Wi-Fi is the range. 2.4GHz has a larger coverage area and better at penetrating solid objects like walls and stuff. Whereas 5GHz has a smaller coverage area so it's obviously not good at you know, penetrating solid objects like a door or you know, a wall and stuff. Now, remember how in our second example, the 5 GHz is not available in my garden, but you can see 2.4 GHz? Yeah, that's practically the difference in range. If we talk about it in theory, so the wavelength of 2.4 GHz is much broader compared to 5 GHz, and because of that, 2.4 GHz has a longer range and can penetrate solid objects more easily than 5 GHz band, making it ideal for devices that are taking from room to room or are more distant from the router. So the third difference between 5 GHz Wi-Fi and 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi is the network congestion. So 2.4 GHz is more prone to interference, usually because there's more devices on this frequency. Now as you can see from our previous example, a lot of electronic devices and appliances use the 2.4 GHz frequency, including microwaves, security cameras, and phones and stuff. If you have many of these on your home, and if you live in an apartment or a condo surrounded by other people, that 2.4 GHz bandwidth is likely to be congested, which damages the speed and signal quality. Whereas 5 GHz is less prone to interference, usually because there's fewer devices such as laptops, smartphones, that only use this frequency most of the time. Another reason for congestion is that there's 11 Wi-Fi channels on 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi frequency band, Whereas 45 in 5 GHz band, so 5 GHz has less devices and less overlapping as well. So if a device doesn't need to be moved around like a desktop and usually stays near the router, 5 GHz makes way more sense and you can take advantage of the higher speed. Similarly, if you're doing a lot of high bandwidth activity online, such as gaming, you know, video calls or uploading videos on YouTube, this one is the best one that you can use and you need to move as close to the router as possible. Also, if you live in a crowded apartment complex with dozens of wireless routers, security cameras, and other you know, 2.4 GHz band devices, then you should definitely consider switching to the 5 GHz band if you haven't already. On the other hand, on a device that moves around a lot throughout the day, like your smartphone or a laptop, especially if you have a large home, the 2.4 GHz frequency is much better. 
This wavelength has a longer range and can penetrate solid objects like we spoke before, making it ideal for devices that are taken from room to room and more distant from the router. So finally, if you, you know, have a device that supports wired ethernet connection and it's not too awkward to get the cable around the device, we highly recommend that you use a wired connection over a wireless one. Wired connections offer low latency, no drop connections due to interference and just start playing faster than wireless connections. I use LAN cable while going live on YouTube or you know, playing games on my PS5 or even when I need to rely on high internet speed for my meetings. So there you go, hopefully this video helped you pick between 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. In simpler words, say, you know, use LAN cable whenever possible, like say if you're in a meeting and you just bring your laptop close to the router and then plug it in with the LAN cable. If you can't really do that, just use the 5 GHz by getting closer into the room where the router is. Or if you're really far away and just, you know, browsing or watching YouTube, like say upstairs, then just go for 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi because it gives you more range. And that's about it for this video. Wait, there is one more thing. Check out smartdnsproxy.com if you're keen to unblock geo-restricted content on the laptop or smartphone that you're browsing on with, you know, either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz to unlock geo-restricted content that can get you access to, you know, Netflix US, HBO Max, which is only available in US, Apple TV US, because there's way more content in US than outside of that. All that for about five bucks a month, which is bugger all. And subscribe if you're new to this channel for more informative videos like these. That way you get notified every time we put out a new video. Anyway, I'm Vamzi. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.